Hi, I'm Dr. Elliot Adam from ElliotOracle.com. I'm also the author of Fearless Tarot, which takes tarot out of the realm of fear and into a place of personal empowerment, and also Tarot in Love, uh, Consulting the Cards and Matters of the Heart. Both books are available from Llewellyn Books and are available online wherever books are sold. Uh, it is time for this week's Oracle Reveal. So yesterday on my social media, I placed up a photo of three different animals, and I asked you to use your intuition and just ask yourself, which animal's calling to you? Because that animal has your message. And the animals were the rabbit, the honeybee, and the monkey. So if you're just joining me now, ask yourself which animal seems to be getting caught in your head because that animal has your message. So for those of you who pick the rabbit animal spirit, uh, the rabbit is all about fertility. It heralds the beginning of spring. And rabbit can also represent uh, working on overcoming our anxiety. You know, whenever we see rabbits out in nature, uh, they're afraid you're going to eat them. They sort of freeze or they dart away. And so sometimes the medicine of rabbit is to teach us how to overcome our own paralyzing fears and instead to really see the opportunities for increase for abundance, for a new spring. The first card I'm going to talk about for rabbit is where it's best for you to place your focus for this next week. And here we see the sun, which has long been called the best card in the deck. And I think the reason for this is, is number one, the sun is bright, it's optimistic, and can indicate that it's best to place your focus on something optimistic right now. But the reason you can be optimistic is because every day the sun rises anew. Every day you get another chance, another shot to steer your life into the uh, direction you want it to go. And this card can also tell you that no matter what happened in the past or what uh, you know, gray rain clouds seem to be blocking out the optimism of your own life, this card is really calling you back toward optimism, toward something to feel hopeful about. This is also a card of magical assistance. You can see the little baby here. He's kind of open to life. He's uh, spreading out his arms, but he's riding that horse. And horses are symbols of uh, divine assistance and help. Horses helped mankind uh, overcome great distances and bring the world together uh, before there were vehicles. And so horse could be coming up as well on that sun card to just indicate that it's time to accept the help that's being offered. Or maybe some help is coming your way to start anew, to create a new beginning. And a lot of us, we don't get to where we want to go all by ourselves. A lot of times we need to accept help or work with others to make that happen. So that sun card could just indicate that optimism is going to come from cooperation as well. The advice from your inner wisdom, if you pick the rabbit, look at that other solar image for the rabbit. It's just so lovely. We got the Queen of Wands. And who doesn't love the Queen of Wands? She's the epitome of confidence, charisma. You know, the Queen of Wands walks into a room and elevates the energy with her personal charisma. She also holds the sunflower, and that features uh, on both of these cards here, you know, both the sun uh, with the baby and the sunflowers, uh, but also the Queen of Wands holding her sunflower. And what does the sunflower do? Well, as the sun passes through the sky, it's always turning its face toward the light. So this could be a time this next week where you really need to stay trained on the light, on your optimism, and also on some sort of expression. The Queen of Wands has also been called the actress of the tarot. So sometimes she can indicate that you sometimes need to act your way uh, into creating a brighter circumstance. Sometimes the energy might be uh, not feeling very uplifting around you. And yet it's up to you to just take that energy, switch it around and elevate it uh, for others. This next week, if you pick the rabbit, just ask yourself, you know, when I leave a room, have I elevated the energy? Do people feel better? Or does it feel like I wasn't even there at all? The Queen of Wands is telling you to call attention uh, to what makes you most optimistic, what makes you shine, what makes you bright, and use that magic uh, to change the world around you. And the mythic archetype that's going to help you is Pegasus, uh, which uh, the card says friendship, freedom, and the wish to assist. And again, we got that horse symbol uh, with the Pegasus, uh, Pegasus being the winged horse. And so there is that, send, uh, that symbolism of assistance coming. Maybe this card is also saying, I don't know, just intuitively for me, but there's karma working around you. 
And if you can stay focused on how do I assist you? How do I serve you? What can I do to help the energy elevate around me? Well, you're going to put out a different energy signature that's going to attract a wonderful uh, response from the universe. So this is a week to not only accept assistance, but also to be an assistance, to bring light and optimism to those that are around you. It really does create magic for people when you go out there and you make the energy better by bringing your special form of light and not expecting anything in return. Next, we're going to go into the honeybee. Uh, and honeybee is uh, known for getting busy and creating the sweetest honey. And honey, for me, it's magic. Number one, I love honey. I just ate a whole jar of it <laughs> uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, we, we got some from a public market, but it's a healing, magical substance. They used to put it on wounds uh, for an antibiotic, an antibacterial. And so there is something magical about honey. It can really heal uh, the throat, heal the voice as well when you drink it. Uh, but it's also a symbol for reward after hard work. And so I just kind of feel like there is magic that's going to be uh, coming as a result of your efforts this next week if you're focused on the honeybee. But sometimes you do have to face those trials, face that test, just keep going, stay consistent. First card for honeybee is where it's best to place your focus, and appropriately we get that angel of temperance. And the angel of temperance, you know, number one, you look up the word temperance in the dictionary, a lot of times the word associated with it is moderation. Nothing too much when the temperance card comes up. This is a time where you need to be very mindful of balance and equilibrium. And if you're not sure about balance, check in with your body. Check in with your um, you know, uh, sense of wellness and well-being. Are you feeling depleted? Are you feeling like you need something more? Uh, the angel of temperance pours one full cup of water into the empty cup, meaning he's consciously refilling that which has been running on empty. And I feel for you with the honeybee, uh, yeah, maybe you are working toward uh, the sweetest results. You are putting your effort in. But temperance could say that it's also time to taste the honey sometimes. It's not just about that unrelenting grind. Next, we got advice from your inner wisdom if we pick the honeybee. And look at this. So cool. Two major arcana cards with the star card here. Uh, the advice from your inner wisdom for the honeybee, number one, I mean, you can't get wiser than the star. And look at the matching symbolism here. Both the woman on the star card and the angel of temperance, they have one foot in the water and one foot on the dry land. There is this sense of balance. You are needing to be both in touch with your spirit, in touch with your inner wisdom, but you're also needing to ground that in the real world this next week. The star card is the card of hope. And it's saying hope is at the end of the tunnel right now. Even if it feels like something's been depleted, it's time to replenish that. And to whom much is given, much is required with the star card. You know, you know, piggybacking off of that rabbit symbolism of service and helping others. Same with the star card. We got the woman on the star card who's taking the water from the universal pool, pouring it on the dry land next to her to benefit her own life. And yet, what is she doing with the other jug? She's replenishing the pond. She's replenishing the pool. And what I like to think of that is as she's taking from that universal pool to help her own life, but then she's giving something back of herself to the collective to ensure that those waters do not run dry. And so I just feel like this is such an important uh, week of balance for you if you pick the B. And it's so important that you're listening to your spirit, that you're replenishing uh, that universal pond. And sometimes, again, that is by sharing your own inner wisdom with those that are going to benefit from it. And the mythic archetype that's going to help you is Jupiter. His card says liberation, opportunity, and the wish to expand. And Jupiter, he's the king of the gods, the largest of the planets in astrology. He does represent expansion. Uh, he does uh, represent good luck, good fortune, something uh, just brimming over with goodness. And I just kind of feel like this sense of if you give back to yourself, if you get back to that collective, uh, there's just something really lucky coming your way. This is a week, if you pick the B, to participate with the world, not to hide away from it, and maybe somehow to use your work to bring sweetness to others. And then finally, we have the monkey uh, animal spirit. And I always get a little smile when I think of monkeys. They're so cute, uh, but they're also super intelligent. 
And the monkey could just indicate that this is a time to use your cleverness uh, to overcome obstacles. And also maybe to use your humor with a problem that you've just kind of like been banging your head against the wall about. Maybe it's time to lighten up about it. Find that uh, vein of optimism uh, to follow. Uh, but monkey can indicate that it's not a good time to take yourself too seriously right now. First card for monkey is where it's best to place your focus. We have the Six of Swords. For me, Six of Swords is the most benevolent change card in the tarot. We got the refugees. They're leaving behind the rough waters. They're sailing toward the smooth waters. This card is long associated with moving, journeys, voyages, movement, transitions. And yet, you know, there's a lot of change cards in the tarot, like the Tower or the Ten of Swords or the Death card, which can sometimes indicate uh, challenges or, or even a difficult feeling about that change. But the Six of Swords is just as easy as getting in that boat and following the natural current. So I feel for the monkey, it's time to identify where the natural current of your life seems to be flowing and give yourself over to it. Just surrender to it. Leave behind the rough waters, leave behind the stress, drop your shoulders, unclench your jaw, take a nice deep breath, and just sail toward that positive new beginning. Change is in the air, and if you accept it, you're going to get to a better destination. Advice from your inner wisdom is the Two of Wands. You know, the Two of Wands has a, a, an ambitious quality to it. It's a card of like yearning, striving for more. It can be really good when it's coupled with the Six of Swords because this card could say that maybe in the confines of the castle that you've been in, uh, the confines of the safety and security there, uh, the Two of Wands could indicate that it's time to go out into the world. I just feel like there's movement, expansion. Perhaps it's time to travel or maybe it's time to look at a new environment for the answer to the thing that seems so stuck for you. If you've been going in circles and looking in the same place for the same answer and it just is not appearing, the universe could be saying, take a hint. It's time to look somewhere else. It's time to go into a different direction. And if you don't know where that direction is, just trust where the flow is going. Trust where the current seems to be leading you. Uh, there are serendipitous magical events happening around you and you just need to pay attention to it and let that wind uh, fill your sails. And the mythic archetype that's going to help you is Saturn. This card says karma, control, and the wish to restructure. And that whole theme of restructuring is coming up here. You know, Saturn is a challenging archetype. It tests you. It makes you work hard. It doesn't let everything come to you easily. And yet, it also is a reward planet. And so it can indicate that rewards come when you have put in the work, when you have pushed yourself. And so I just kind of feel like this could be a time where some of that hard work might be paying off. And it might also be a time to cash in your chips. It might be a time to stop struggling so hard in one area, but instead see where that energy seems to be flowing and know that Saturn may be giving you some good karma as we're going into this next week as well. And that is this week's Oracle. I do hope you enjoyed it. If you did, you can always schedule a one-on-one -on -one session with me at ElliotOracle.com. I know my schedule is really filling up a lot right now. I'm just about to embark on a trip to Greece. I'm working on a tarot deck uh, that I've been drawing for the last 25 years, if you can believe it, and it is finally finished. But I need to write the guidebook to go along with the cards. And since it's a deck that's based on Greek mythology, I'm going to all the ancient temples of Greece and I'm going to be writing there. So I'm going to be posting some of my adventures uh, coming up on my social media. I hope you can follow me there. Uh, but if you're wanting to schedule a session, uh, please be patient. It might be booked out a little bit, uh, but I will get to everybody and um, you won't regret uh, scheduling a session with me. Uh, I hope you all have a wonderful week, whatever it is you're doing. And if you find this video useful, please give it a thumbs up. Please share it with a friend uh, and also subscribe to my channel. It's really helping the tarot community grow that's based on personal empowerment instead of fear. I hope you all take care and I will be checking in with you from Greece. Uh, so please take care and I will see you again next time.